Should we expect the Spurs to load manage the heck out of Wimbanyana? You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey guys, this is Jason David Frank, the Green Ranger, and you are listening to a Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. It's morphin' time. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs right here on the Locked On NBA Network. I'm your host, Jeff Garcia, Spurs writer for Ken's 5 San Antonio. Glad to have you back. Happy Monday, everybody. Hope everybody's having a great start to the work week. We'll get you going right here on Locked On Spurs. Hey, hey, guess what? Shocker, another episode about Wimby. Yep, we're going to be discussing uh, his imminent arrival he's not officially a spur yet but look we all know he will be but when he gets here should spurs fans should we all expect him to be load managed like crazy considering his age his frame and yes a bit of a history of injuries and also with the team starting to look at how they're going to construct a construct a roster around him is it time to part ways with trey jones he is a restricted free agent or keep him on board but just Move them around a bit right here on Locked On Spurs. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. Who is helping me out today? He's back, everybody. Casey Vieira, my colleague at Ken's 5 San Antonio. And I am assuming, uh, Casey, you're still smiling. Spurs won the draft lottery and Wimby is incoming. How could you not, right? I know, man. How can you not? How could, how could you not? It's one of those things where... You know, you're you're you, it, it's been almost kind of a myth, a myth and a hypothetical for yeah, oh my, two years now, and mm-hmm. now it's, it's actually here. happening. Yeah, it's here now. Look, the draft uh, is yeah. yeah, the draft is still weeks away. But look at you know all signs, it's it's obvious they're gonna pick him. So don't worry about that. But right, you, don't let you Ryan know, Wright fool you. Did you see yeah. that clip? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I, I spoke to uh, Wright uh, after the uh, you know, the Spurs won the lottery, talking about the fan base celebrating San Antonio, and he just kept dancing around Wimby's name. He wouldn't say the name. I tried to trip him up a bit, but he didn't confess. But apparently there's like, rules. Uh, I didn't I even know say, that. Is there a rule for that? Thank you. That's what I thought, because when the Spurs won Robinson lottery, the general manager then was all like, yeah, we're going to still wait for him. What's the big deal? Yeah, we'll wait for him. Duncan got picked. Uh, I think uh, Peter J's dad said, yeah, you know, openly say we're getting Duncan. But apparently, this, unless there's an internal memo we didn't get with the NBA, apparently Spurs or NBA teams cannot say who they're going to pick. It makes no sense. I mean, it's Spurs being Spurs probably. But when, when, Peter, when, uh, when Peter J. Hall is sitting up there, <laughs> and, and screaming his head off at the end after they won. That's a pretty dead giveaway that the pick is not going to be Brandon Miller. <laughs> what, oh, it's not going to be Scoot? What? What? Yeah, According to right? him, he, he's going to go number one, apparently. Did he say that? Yeah. Nah, he's, he's, what is he going to say? No, I'm worth, I'm worthy of number two. So, yeah. But nevertheless, we're here to talk about Wimby and the Spurs. And uh, before we do that, make sure to follow Casey on Twitter at Casey uh, underscore Vieira. Make sure you do that right now because we'll have all things covered Wimby at Ken's 5 TV side. That's Casey. And on the digital side, that's me. Let's dive into this. And one thing that Spurs fans, you, me, everybody's talking about is how he's going to physically transition into the NBA. There's the video of him getting dunked on by a big dude in France. There's obviously his sleight of frame. There's the fact that he's just a kid, 19 years old, not really full filled out his body yet, which begs the question with the Spurs loving to load manage, Casey, should we brace for a taste of Wimby this upcoming season or we'll get a full entree of him all 82 games? Nah, the latter. Or, or the wow. fourth. The fourth. Yeah. Rumor. The yeah. one, the one, the one with him not playing a full eighty-two. That one. <laughs> wow. I, Is that a well, good or bad move? Well, I mean, how how do you do this with him with the NBA marketing him as we speak, and they're going to want him I to mean, play? I, I uh, they don't. Spurs don't care. And, and to be fair, nobody plays a full eighty-two game anyways. 
What'd yeah. you have? Like two? This, would you have two this year? One? Mm-hmm. You had Bridges. You had Bridges who played '83 because of the Brooklyn Phoenix trade. And was yeah. there anyone else? No. Nope. I don't know. So, so let's set let's set the number a little bit less because no one plays no one plays '82. So like, I guess '65. We'll say '65. Right. Is that a better number? But at, but, but how do you how, how do you think that'll balance between his adjustment to the NBA style? Because there's a part of me. Casey, that says throw the kid in the fire, let him sink or swim. You know, if he's all right. that, let's see it. Well, and, he's gonna be that. So yeah, yeah. Well, I want to see it. You know, and but if, but it, it just so the, the, I think the Spurs are gonna have to really balance this because he's fully aware. His camp is fully aware. You are aware. I am. Everybody listening in right now is players his size don't usually last long in the NBA or. One injury and that's it. It's almost done. From Greg Oden right. to right. Yao Ming to uh, you know Anthony Davis. Look at him. He's you know Mr. Glass. You know players that size and height don't last. So Casey, this legs these the question is how delicate are they going to be with him? What are you expecting? I am expecting them to treat him. Like a, 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 I don't think I, I'm expecting them to treat them like you'd expect, like you expect them to treat them. I think that's the best way to put it. And mm-hmm. and when you see a night, when you see a 19 year old and all those things that you just said, the prevailing thought is you're going to want to protect them, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. And I think that's what they're going to do. I think that's what they're going to do because there's no reason not to. What's the why? Why wouldn't you do that? It's not like there's a massive incentive to win now to get him to play or anything mm-hmm. like that. He's still going to be the guy. He's still going to get plenty if he plays 65 games. He's still going to get plenty of 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 a full taste of the NBA right there. Yeah. I don't I don't think that's neglecting him or you know hiding him from anything else. But I think they're going to be careful because they have to be careful. They have to be. Why would you not? Why would why would you want to run that into the ground right off the bat? It makes no sense. I mean, this is their prize, their their most prized asset that they've had in almost thirty years now. You're not. They're not going to get cute with it. They're they're going to treat that and with no sense of urgency. They're not going to get cute with it, and and they're going to be careful. And then if it means that they do rest him off the second of a back to back every now and then, I wouldn't be surprised. Because what's the what what's the urgency? There is no urgency. There's no well, urgency. I, I I think there could be some pushback as the season moves on if right everybody sees that. You're gonna see it from their moneymaker right now that are ticket sales. I mean ticket sales are going through the roof right now. And right. you're gonna probably see some pushback from fans saying I flew all the way in from France to watch Wimby play and I can't because he's being load managed. You're going to have season ticket uh, people in San Antonio saying I bought season tickets of Wimby, but apparently my 20 game pack now allows me to only see him eight, 10 times. I mean, you, I think the sports got to be aware of that. Casey, your thoughts. Hey, I want to talk to you about Prize Picks. Hey, did you know there's a million dollar daily Superflex promotion going on right now throughout the NBA playoffs and finals? Every day of the NBA playoffs and finals, one Prize Pick user will get a chance to become a millionaire. You just got to place one entry after 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time to be randomly selected each day. Whoever placed that entry will then be given a six pick flex with the following payouts six correct picks equals a million, five correct picks equals 80,000. Four correct picks equals sixteen thousand dollars. You can go and check it out at pricepicks.com slash milling. You must opt in at this link to be eligible for the million dollar entry. Once you opt in, all you gotta do is play the game like normal and you could be the lucky winner. Hey, but overall, you gotta try price picks. No competing against other people, it's just you versus the projections available. They got projections on any sport that you watch: NBA, NFL, MLB, NHL, PGA, Euro basketball, cricket, MMA, disc golf, boxing, and so much more. Fun and easy to use, safe, fast withdrawals. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. Operational over 30 states and in Canada. Download the Price Picks app or go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. 
First time users get themselves a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, Price Pick gives you $100. If you deposit $50, Price Picks gives you $50. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on and sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. That's a question you should ask yourself, Megatron. Oh, I mean, that's the NBA in 2023. Yeah, it's what, like that. That's that's what it is. It's, I don't want to say buyer beware because I think that's a little bit strong. But we live in a climate mm-hmm. where superstars get rested. Superstars don't play every single day, and if it means that you have somebody flying in from wherever to go check it out, well, sorry, you picked the wrong day to come out. It, it, it seems like the NBA is is eyeing everyone to have to not play fewer than what was it 60 games that they said on on the mm-hmm. on the new CBA to keep them you know fewer than six uh, what is it 60 games the number minimum you need to play to in order to be eligible for awards is that what the number is yeah it's 65 either, actually. either way yeah either yeah. way like three quarters of the game so clearly the NBA in a perfect world you'd like to have these guys out there every single night but it's not possible one and number two. It's just the climate of the league, and mm-hmm. and it's it 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 does it it comes with the, this is not anything foreign as to what's happening right now, it, it, and you, it, think about the way it's been in San Antonio for us this mm-hmm. past year. I mean, we had Steph Curry load managed twice. We had Giannis load managed when he was here. This is this is part of the norm. And so what did the Spurs fans do? It's like, okay, yeah, we're annoyed. Well, you know what? Tough. Can't do anything about it. Can't do anything about it. Yeah. The Bucks don't care about your feelings. The Bucks are trying to win a championship. Just like mm-hmm. just like in a couple months when you have the Spurs flying out to I don't know, Minnesota or something like that and they rest them and then there's the fans going out to see them. Well, sorry, we don't care about your feelings. We're trying to win a championship yeah. in a couple of years and keep our billion, you know, billion dollar asset essentially healthy and basically, and, and yeah. Safe. Yeah, we don't care about little Johnny's feelings. Oh, you know, man. That's that that's 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 still tough though. I mean, that's still a bad place to be if you're the Spurs. You got ticket sales. You got the health of their billion dollar assets. You mentioned. You got the NBA that's probably going to market the you know what out of him the moment he puts on that draft day cap. Yeah, um, but but. I don't honestly. I don't think. I, I think the NBA has accepted that, though. You really think games. so? They're they, they're broadcasting his French his French games throughout his entire season. And he's not in the NBA. I think so, they'll okay. have an issue so, with that. I mean, in a perfect world, yeah. But yeah, there's a perfect world, and then there's the realistic world that we're in. And the perfect world in 2023 NBA doesn't exist. It just doesn't mm. exist anymore. You know. You know he's not going to play 82 games. No, I know that. I, I know that yeah, not even. Like, so, yeah, yeah so but like what's, what's in your mind, like what's the ideal number? I would like to see. To make everyone happy. Woo. Marquee games. Well, I think every right. game is going to be a marquee game with him. Because, he, yeah. he, I mean, you look at the national media. And I'm not exaggerating. Certainly in this and, first year. Certainly in this first yeah, year. Yeah, in, in the first year. And the national media, and I'm not making this up, Casey, I'm pretty sure you've seen it. There, You know, your ESPN's uh, NBA writers, your NBA.com writers and TV personalities are all but saying they're moving to San Antonio. They literally are saying this, that they're moving to San Antonio, looking for temporary housing. They even joked about how many Ubers they're going to take because of him. So if you got that yeah. aspect of it, um, so you got this influx of, of media coming into San Antonio. I mean, the Spurs <laughs> joked. I, I don't know if you were on the call. Spurs don't but, care uh, about the media. <laughs> you know exactly. That. So okay. they won't care. Yeah. You know, but yeah. one thing they I do care, care about I, Brian Windhorst's Uber expenses coming from downtown right. to the AT&T Center. <laughs> like, right. But whatever. I, you know, but, but the, the idea and like the notion that more than likely he's going to be low managed like crazy in his opening uh, season as an NBA player. Uh, pro player, you know, right. likely is going to ruffle feathers. I would you be? I don't think anybody would be shocked if the NBA finds the Spurs for load managing him. You think they would? I don't I, because I I don't because okay. what's the difference? Have they find like anyone? Did what was the only fine this year was given to the the Mavericks? 
for trying to tank the game. Was that the only one that was given this year? Yeah, but, but they I'm did that mistaken. stupid. That's when Jason Kidd just openly opened his mouth and said, yeah, we just had everybody to tank. Yeah. Yeah. They're not they're not gonna the Spurs aren't gonna get fined. Because okay. they don't find anyone else they don't find anyone else, so why would they suddenly find the Spurs? Right. Yeah. Nobody got I mean, fined. Look, Nobody look, got fined this year. Yeah. Look, I, you know, it, it's a delicate balance because you know, from the NBA marketing side of things to the fan expectations to ticket sales, and then there's him, and ultimately he is going to win out. He is going to, you know, basically whatever what Wimby wants, Wimby's gonna get. And if Mm-hmm. If he just sneezes, I bet it's oh you're done, you're done, you're not playing, you you know you're out, you know you sit down, you know, uh, I, I I just you know it's gonna suck, you know for those that are scooping up uh, season tickets right now, it's really gonna suck for them, and especially if they get that's a pack. The way it, that's maybe. just the way it is. Yeah, that's just oh, the way it is. Man. You know, I can't really just the way it. It, it, No, I know, it. I know. Yeah. It's just a shame. It's just a shame. I'm old school. I, you know, you, the new school kids, you know, are used to the load managing. I came from back when Jordan, when Kobe and Shaq and everybody and Carl Malone were playing all 82. So as, well, at least as close as they can. But you saw what Kobe the, looked like at the end of his career because he didn't. Well, and, and that's not entirely true because Kobe is what he, I mean, the last I mean, two Kobe, years. Yeah, I mean, he was hurt. But there you are saw articles. what Kobe looked like. Yeah, I mean, you saw what Kobe. There's the infamous picture of him sitting on the bench his last year and next to last year with his knees wrapped, his shoulder yeah, wrapped. I remember that? Like, yeah, you know? yeah, I remember <laughs> like, that. Yeah, you, you know, the, the, look, and then there comes him, Wimby himself. You know, having to fill mm-hmm. out. He's going to have to fill out, and I know there's articles out there where his French crew slash personal trainers are not putting him on a muscle gaining type of program. Right. But but that has to change, especially when you got he's going to go against the Jokers, and Beads, Giannis. Look at Giannis. Giannis looked almost like Wimby, and now look at him now. He looks like a freak of nature with all the muscle he added. That is right. going to have to happen, isn't it, Casey? But is it though? Because like I look at I look at, initially I was more of your thought process. It's like take homeboy to Whataburger, like yeah, twice fill him up, day. yeah, yeah. But, like, I watch him, and Giannis is what people look at immediately, and they try to parallel with Giannis being, you know, weighing 150, not 150 pounds, but, you know, being I guess, super yeah. thin. Yeah, super thin coming in. But I don't the, – the reason I say I don't think it's important I – don't, I don't think it's important to put an inordinate amount of weight on him, comparatively speaking to Giannis, because mm-hmm. I think their games are different. Giannis – is not much of a not much finesse. He's just pure athleticism, almost kind of a brute who could do whatever, could just do whatever. But he's not, he's not necessarily a finesse type of guy. I you look talk at about the Giannis. Of Giannis, yeah. Okay, Giannis. I look at one Banyama, and I'm like, shouldn't the parallel be more uh, to make him kind of that build of Durant because he's a little mm. bit more finesse. He plays but he a little, does, but he does play at the rim, though. I, I think that might be. Well, a that's thing what that you'll have well, that's what makes him a freak of nature, because yeah. he can play in the paint fine. He can play in the perimeter fine. He can play face up game fine. He can play a back to the basket game fine. So yeah. I think there's going to have to be that delicate balance, and that's where perhaps load management comes in. Perhaps uh, you know, you know he's going to well. Just, Go ahead. Uh, I was going to say, you know, it's going to be interesting. I wouldn't be surprised if you see him and Collins on the floor a lot at the same time, just to not have him be those defensive assignments on Embiid, on oh, for sure. Jokic. I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if, if you see that a lot. Yeah. And it's no, no, he, yeah. You're, you're going to see but, Charles Bassey there with him as well. And if he's around Gorgie Dang taking the punishment. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if you see Wemby play a lot of four minutes this year. Pop might not have been kidding. You know, we all just kind of did a collective eye roll at the end of the season when he said Zach Collins is going to be the starting center. But he might not have been kidding. They're, they're thinking that, all right, Collins is going to be our five. We're going to mm-hmm. play Wemby essentially at the four defensively, not put him on the bruise and bigs. I mean, yeah. it could be. Could be. Could be.
Hey, I want to talk to you about Mudslingers, the best place in San Antonio to get yourself a good pick-me-up. So if you stayed up late and if you need that pick-me-up, then look no further than Mudslingers drive through Coffee. Mudslingers is locally owned and an independent coffee shop, and they're proud to make delicious coffee for our community. They do it fast and friendly so you get on with your day. Whether you're in the mood for a latte, cold brew, or Red Bull-infused lightning bolt, they got drinks for every taste. Over 300 five-star reviews cannot be wrong. They also have a wide selection of dairy alternatives, low-calorie options, and even caffeine-free drinks for when you want to take it easy. They also have the OGOJ. So you're probably thinking, like, what is that? Well, if you remember back in the day, the old Ingram Park Mall, Windsor Park Mall, South Park Mall, and they had that Orange Julius stand, now it's gone. But you can get it back. They are currently having... It over at Mudslingers. And just go to the window, look at the menu. If it's not there, ask for the OGOJ. I'm proud to say that I had a big hand in that. Yes, I was allowed to name it, and I actually inspired Mudslingers to create it. Once again, ask for the OGOJ. And you'll be walking back in Ingram Park Mall and going to B. Dalton Book that was right below it with a nice OGOJ in hand. So go to Mudslingers Drive Through Coffee right now for a tasty and convenient caffeine fix. They are at 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive near Treaty 1 at 1604. Open every day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Also, go by and say happy birthday. They're celebrating their anniversary. So you can go and find them on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok at, at Mudslinger STX. That's M U D S L I N G E R S T X. Life is too short for bland coffee. He is Casey Vieira, my colleague at Ken's 5 uh, TV. He's on the sports desk every weekend, and uh, he'll definitely be telling you all things Wimby as things are about to change in San Antonio for the good with Wimbayana on his way. You, you, you know, just to wrap up this uh, little management talk here, you know, he does have a history of injuries. I think that's kind of been swept under the rug with all the hype. You know, he has broken his leg before. He has dealt with leg and back injuries before. That's not really spoken about. He's right. obviously um, he, he has this incredible pregame warm up that everybody hovers to check out. It's incredible. I don't know. There's video of it. Have you ever seen it? It's just a very they say, it's, they say it's the law yeah. along the lines of the Griffey batting practice. Steph Curry yeah. game routine yeah. type of thing. I haven't seen it yet, but that's I've yeah. heard the same thing. Too. Yeah. 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 I've seen it. Yeah. A lot of rubber bands, a lot of like these. You remember the, I don't know, I maybe, I'm, I'm, like, I'm going to date myself here. The, remember the introduction of the Flintstones when Fred Flintstone does a Twinkle Tolls bowling uh, approach? I mean, there's that. Yeah. He does like these little Twinkle Tolls uh, things and he does a lot of the stretching. But the point is, is that you may see that amped up because. You know, the feet are an issue with big men his size. Uh, David Robinson, what cut his career short was the back injuries. He never had really bad feet or leg injuries. He had bad back injuries from the pounding he took. And that's why right. he cut his, short, his career short. So you're going to be – so now you look at what he went through before coming to the NBA, leg back issues, broken femur already. And that gives me cause to pause. And I'm like, okay, Spurs – we know y'all are the best, allegedly the best in the business when it to take care of players' health. Let's see you do that, and that's going to lend to perhaps some, seeing him sit on the bench and being load managed. Uh, do you? We his, I, I don't think I really just kind of got the bow, you know, put a bow on this, your prevailing thought. Do you think they should load manage him? Yes, I think they should. Okay. I just want – I just yeah. that's what I thought. I just wanted to yeah. – it here, I, I, yeah. I, I'm just speaking it from the fans' point of view. Where if you're the season ticket holder and you're going to bring your son and daughter to go watch Wimby play, and this is their this is their budding dynasty, crossing fingers, as we went through with Timmy and and so on, David and so on, Gervin and so on, and then to see this new prevailing wind of time to load manage everybody that just sucks for them. That just Sorry, sucks. little Johnny. Welcome to the NBA in 2023. You'll get over. Yikes! Yeah, <laughs> but hey, but speaking of uh, Wimbayana and uh, getting him ready for the NBA, there's also getting the roster ready. And if you look at the roster right now, Casey, the big issue is point guard. You probably think, what do you mean point guard? Trey Jones is here. Trey Jones is good. There's no doubt about it. he is a good, solid, reliable NBA player uh, point guard. But he's not it though. He's not exactly what the Spurs need. The Spurs need this 
dynamic type of point guard that can score like crazy and facilitate, and which Trey Jones can, but Trey Jones is a little undersized. Right. Um, I got to ask you, with the next phase of the rebuild is going to be making a roster that fits well around Wimbayana. Is it time to part with Trey Jones, relegate him to a different role, or just trade him? I mean, it looks like that's going to be a big question as the roster so, starts to build out. I mean, I mean, I don't – on the surface level, on the surface level, the type of player that, that he is, what he does, I don't think you move him. I, I, don't, I don't think you move him. I, I think you, he's decent enough for where you're at as a franchise for what you want to do. I don't mm-hmm. think you move him. Now, if you look at it, though, from the Spurs point, if I'm looking at it as if I'm, I'm Brian Wright, and I see any piece on this team right now that you don't feel like is a fit, but you can maximize your value on said piece, regardless of who it is. Because I think everyone, everyone aside from Big Fella, is up for grabs with the sole intent, of course, of mm-hmm. working around him. And if they don't think Trey would work around him, then Trey, thank you for your service past few years. Enjoy Minnesota mm-hmm. or wherever. Right. It be. Yeah. I'm just saying, yeah, for the sake of the conversation. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the good thing about Trey Jones' game, I feel like, yeah, he probably should be a better jump shooter, especially from three. Mm-hmm. But I feel like schematically, he has the type of game that fits a lot of systems for what he does. Realistically, outside of San, mm-hmm. outside of San Antonio, Trey Jones is a is a good backup point guard. He's starting here, mm-hmm. but probably on twenty six other NBA teams, he's not the starting point guard. He's a good top seven eight rotational guy, and I think regardless of where you put him, he'll do that anyways because I think his game translates very very well. Mm-hmm. You're just not, you're just not, that's just not the guy you want to give 35 minutes a night to as your mm-hmm. starting point guard. But I, I don't think for the sake of just moving him just because, I don't see the point of that if you're the Spurs, if you're the Spurs especially when right now he's your best option too, I mean, for yeah. being honest. Well, well if, you, if, you, if you look option, at the uh, yeah. free agent, if you look at the free agent pool, you know, Fred Van Vliet is out there. That's really Spurs got cash and Spurs got cash and money and picks if they want to talk business with Toronto, mm-hmm. if yep. they want to go that route, sign and trade whatever Toronto wants to do, you, you know. Yeah. So they can talk. They can talk business. They 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 got the assets to do it, and that comes to a good point. You know, this, with all of this asset that they still they can afford. I use Toronto for example. If Toronto wants to do a sign and trade, they said give us two first rounds. Okay, it's not going to hurt them because they got how many eleven. Or like something like that, like eleven or yeah, nine or twelve. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Jeez. So okay, sure. Yeah. Here you go. There's gonna. Yeah. I mean, there's gonna be a move because you can't draft twelve for you can't draft yeah. twelve guys. You just can't. So there's gonna be a move at some point. Uh, I, I, I mean, could see a scenario where one of the protected Atlanta ones. Well, actually, mm-hmm. only one of them was protected. But you know, the protected Boston one or the protected Bulls one. That's mm-hmm. not going to be a lottery pick if it means you get Fred Van Vliet. I could, yeah, I agree with you. I think that could happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, look, look, it's no knock on Trey Jones. You know, he's a solid player. You know, he, won, in my opinion, one of the most improved players from last season, and it does it all. But considering you know the NBA is a scoring guard as well, with your Damian Lillards, your Fred Van Vliet's, your Steph Curry's, uh, and so forth and so mo- uh, so forth. Yeah, I mean, I think that the Spurs need that. I think it'll benefit Wimby as well. He go, I mean, having that perimeter threat is going to just do wonders for him if he decides to play in the paint. And that's the thing about Wimby; he's just a freak in nature. Right. If, if he can play on the in, the in the paint, because he also dribble and take you off the dribble, face up off the dribble, not back to the basket dribble, like one on one, just going to the rim. He can do that. So, you know, there's still those question marks. You know, trade and if Trey Jones is a, a restricted free agent. So I I think the Spurs will match if he does get an offer. They have the money to do it, unless it's some ridiculous offer that you, that you give 
that another team's going to give him. I don't see them matching something crazy. But then again, I don't see Trey Jones demanding that type of money. Um, or at least right. the market not saying that he is mere max player or nothing like that. Um, yeah. But am I missing something here, Casey? Do you think it's just the point guard spot the Spurs the Spurs need to get to start surrounding Wemby with a solid roster? That's a good question. Um, I, I think they need to add more veterans. I think that's something. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I think I agree with that. I think I agree with that. Yeah. You know, whether they, they bring back Trey Jones at that reasonable price and move him during the middle of the season to do something or that, like you said, I think Trey Jones is going to, I think whatever he gets offered, I think it'll be something reasonable for the Spurs to match. Mm-hmm. But hey, you know what? From their perspective, they might view Trey Jones as a veteran. All right, that's true. Yeah, they might view. I, it, I mean, on the on the surface, a guy who's only been in the league a handful of years. I mean, yeah, by they, definition, they, he is a veteran. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they. Hey, listen. Remember what was it? Two, three years ago now, where they brought back Bryn Forbes, and we we're all like, that, yeah. yeah, we're like, why? They're like, oh, he's a system guy who knows the system can help and Trey Jones is better than Brent Forbes was so I could see them having the viewpoint of that hey Brent Forbes is a free agent but I don't know if they want to touch him after what happened with Primo I don't think Brent Forbes is going to be employed anywhere in the NBA anytime soon yikes yikes Japan no. gonna go join Dwight Howard in the China or oh, China China yeah what a, there. Mess. what a mess I know, but look, you know, circling back to Wimbledon and the Spurs, and you know, this is a, these are good problems to have. You know, oh no, we have to load manage a generational player, not that in San Antonio, uh, right? You know, you trade Jones is your quote unquote best option at point guard right now. Oh, poor Spurs, you know, he only had career highs last season, so yeah, you know, these are good things, but it's all about Wimby and getting that roster perfect for him. It's in my think, opinion, Casey. It's almost it. I feel like as of this recording, the roster is almost good to go if you build around him. Like I think it's right there. Well, you know what? That that you kind of just answered the question that I had. Okay. I ask you was, do you think anyone on this roster right now is? I don't want to say what's what's one step below untouchable because I think there's only a handful of untouchable guys in the uh, league. High price, but, high price. Yeah. Do you do you think there's any guy on this roster that they really, really, really hesitate parting ways with? I think Devin and Jeremy. I think so too. Those were the two I was going to say. Yeah. Those are I think two. I. I and this is another locked on because this is a very deep topic, but I, I think they probably view Kelvin as expendable. I think they view him the way they view DeJounte. You yeah. Know, a, a piece, if they need, if, if it ain't just working, like for some reason the roster ain't working or something's not clicking and they need to make a major shakeup, he is their biggest uh, tool to use in a, in a good, in a good trade that'll get things right. Um. Chemistry. That definitely will get you the best. Re- yeah, that will get you yeah. the best return. I think it's Kelvin eerily Johnson similar. Yeah, it's e- eerily I, similar to how they treated is. Derek and Dejounte. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So we're on the same page with that. Yeah, yeah. we're on the same. Because I was thinking, I was thinking the the basically the same thing. I, I think it's kind of it's kind of interesting when you look at Keldon Johnson and Devin Vassell because isn't this really starting to mirror what we saw with mm-hmm. DeJounte and Derek White yep. for so long. Exactly. It's, and and it's don't like forget Lonnie guys. Walker, too. Right. Yeah, well, yeah. with DeJounte and Derek White, I mean, the thing that we were talking about all the time was they're going to have to split them up because your two best players can't be the same guys who play largely the same game or very similar yeah. game. Yeah, yeah and, and the same position. And the same, that's right, at the at the same position. And while I think there's a little bit more diversity in, in Kelvin Johnson and Devin Vassell's game, there also are a lot of similarities. Mm-hmm. And I could totally see a world where after this season, 
they kind of find, they've kind of, I don't want to say back them for the sake of the conversation. I don't want to say back into the corner, but back themselves into a corner a little bit where it's like, all right, well, now we have a little, especially, especially with Sohan too. Yeah. We've kind of, what we have, we have three of these guys. We're thin at point guard. We're moving one of them for a point guard. Mm-hmm. I could totally see that as a scenario. Absolutely. I'm right there with you. And, and, and the thing about it too, is that, if they're in that corner and if somebody's asking for a bit of a price, like a high price to make a deal, uh, you know, they can afford that with the cash they have, the picks they have, the player. I mean, yeah. for, you know, you need an expiring contract, you know, uh, I'm making this up Orlando in our deal. Then here, here's Doug McDermott. You know, that'll get some money off your books too. You, you, yep. you know, they just have that luxury now. And that's why I really believe that, the rebuild is going to be accelerated like 10 times 10 now times 10. I mean, they can make moves Should they on choose, the fly. Yeah. That's the odd luxury that they have because mm-hmm. should they choose to do that? There's a world where they can, should they decide that they want to have this team grow in mm-hmm. a, a reason in a reasonable sense, of of having that you know if not with the full intent of winning games a reasonable mm-hmm. rational defense of it they can do that yeah it's a, you don't see uh, you don't see this position for teams a lot no you don't. I mean maybe maybe Oklahoma City last year yeah the the maybe. closest the closest team that I can think of that had this luxury is maybe Boston when that's Dan, true Danny that's Ainge true. would yeah and that's really true. the year excel- they uh, yeah. Right, 2018, where they lost mm-hmm. the Cavs and the, and the con- that's, yeah. you know, that's it. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's the one. Yeah, is Boston. Boston is the perfect example of what they can do with bringing in Kevin Garnett and then, the, the, you know, bringing in Ray Allen and that that team they had. Oh, so you're thinking even further back. Yeah, thinking further back. I mean, they they've had it for a while, then it kind of fell apart, but but it did. I mean, it did bring up, you know, for them Tatum and Brown. So there's that. So they're right. fine. But yeah, I mean, I think the Spurs, I want to say could mirror Boston, but th- that's more of the loose blueprint they can probably do and, and do it better than what Boston did. Because right. any ancients, they refused to trade anything when they, they could have kept that dynasty going or make a dynasty. He just was wouldn't budge. And it's I think ironic, Brian Wright. Uh, it's ironic because right now, without all that, this is the best chance they've had to win a championship. Mm-hmm. They had those. They had all those picks for so long, and yep. you know, it was Anthony Davis. They thought for a while, and, mm-hmm. they just, and Duran, and now by not doing anything with them, I'm not. I don't want to say not doing anything, but they're best suited to win a championship now than they ever were. Go figure. With Danny Rick, with yeah, go, go figure. figure right? Go figure. <laughs> He is Casey Vieira. Make sure to follow him on Twitter at Casey underscore Vieira. And he's taking care of you on the TV side of things. And yes, Ken's Five will be covering all things Wembanyama from, uh, you know, my article right now that's up on Ken's Five.com slash Spurs. Tony Parker weighing in. Uh, Even on the news interview. side, bro. Even on, don't, don't neglect the news side. Our, I'm not. I'm not. I, I was going to start off with the digital side, then move to the news side because I'm going to let you go yeah. before I get right, right up. But on the digital uh, side first, yeah. you can see about Tony Parker, Wimbayana, and his his thoughts about him coming to San Antonio. He said it was destiny. Find out what he had to say at kinsfight.com slash Spurs. And also on the TV side, where uh, Casey Vieira will have you covered for all things um, Wimby. And uh, you guys got, I think you had like a, your video at the bar where they want it all. That was a crazy video. Yeah. Us and Petrini, those two videos blew up. Yeah, yeah. That's well, I mean, that, I mean, we were. It, this is a story for another day because I know we're against the clock. We were literally sitting in a car, or my car, putting all this stuff together because I have a live shot at at the end. And Petrini's sitting next to me. He's like, "Yo, this tweet's doing numbers." I'm like, "Okay, whatever." And so I tweet my video, and all of a sudden my video starts doing numbers, not like Petrini's <laughs> numbers. And next thing you know, we're sitting there in my car putting all this content together and our phones are just like blowing up like, oh my god <laughs> yeah <laughs> Webby, make sure to follow 
Yeah, the, the Wemby effect right now. We're feeling it. Everybody, all of San Antonio is feeling it right now. Again, follow Casey on Twitter at Casey underscore Vieira. You'll have all things Wemby free on the TV side at Ken's 5 TV uh, on the weekends and much, much more. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts. So for Casey Vieira, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Locked On Spurs. 